Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and today is March 12th, 2015, and we have more Dragons of Tarkir spoilers for you. We have 11 new cards to look at, and let me tell you right now, these are some of the best, if not the best cards we have seen spoiled so far, and no Planeswalkers in here, but just some really nice cards. So very excited about this. One other side note, if you haven't subscribed, it's a good time to, we're going to continue putting out these spoiler videos. However, I believe tomorrow the, the rest of the set's going to be spoiled, and what we'll do instead of a regular spoiler video is we'll begin our set review videos. So so don't miss out on those and let's get started our first uh, item to look at is we have basic lands so they did showcase what our basic lands will look like there's planes and really nice art on these as well islands swamps mountains that one on the right was that art was spoiled a couple weeks ago a lot of people speculated that was scolding tarn uh, we know now it's a mountain. Uh, I have a good feeling, though, we'll be seeing those fetch lands probably in battle for Zendikar. So they'll be coming. Forest. And so let's get started with our first card. It's Myth Realized. One white, it's an enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a lore counter on Myth Realized. Pay a white and two colorless to put a lore counter on Myth Realized, and then pay one until end of turn. This becomes a monk avatar creature in addition to other creature types, and it gains this creature's power and toughness is equal to the number of lore counters on it. This is a fine card. Very fine enchantment, enchant man sort of. He's only one white to get into play and he can get big pretty quick this is a card that a lot of times you'll underestimate and think well how dangerous is it okay you put him into play he's nothing and then i have to pay to activate maybe he's a one one or two two but if your deck has a lot of instants and sorceries even say planeswalkers and artifacts in here he can get big fast and then if you don't run into a lot of those types of spells you do have the ability to mana sync counters onto him as well I hate putting a lot of resources into a card and then it gets destroyed, but he can quasi-protect himself a little bit by turning back into an enchantment at the end of the turn. And he's just so cheap that I just feel like he's worth the, the risk. I really like this card. Very fine limited card. This could definitely see a home in standard, maybe even modern. I have a very strong feeling that this card is going to be maybe overlooked in the beginning, but is going to become a strong force. Our next one is Silk Wrap, one white and one colorless. It's an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature with converted mana cost three or less and opponent controls until Silk Wrap leaves the battlefield. So this is, we haven't seen this effect in the last couple sets. So here's the Dragons of Tarkir version of it. It's a fine card. I find it interesting that they did make it mana cost three or less so that it can hit things like your morph cards, but it's not going to hit things like the dragons that they're really trying to push in this set. Uh, but it's a fine card. It's still fine removal and limited regardless. Next card is Bellatol Dragon, one blue, five colorless. He's a three, three dragon, flying hexproof, megamorph, two blue and five colorless. And when he is turned face up, all other dragon creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So he is another one in this cycle of three, three dragons for six. And just like I set up with the other ones, it's a little pricey. His megamorph is very pricey, especially for what he does. I do like having a flying hexproof and limited for six. I'll pay the six. I'm uh, not gonna do anything besides limited but he's a fine guy in limited next card is clone legion two blue and seven colorless it's a sorcery for each creature target player controls put a token onto the battlefield it's a copy of that creature and he's it's very pricey the first thing you look at it okay it's going to cost me a lot to cast you almost think where's the delve on this but of course it'd be way too powerful with delve but you look at this card okay it's probably not going to be constructed it's maybe in some limited decks if you have if you're pretty creature heavy it could make sense trying to shoehorn it in there however this is an awesome commander card this is one of the most fun commander cards i've seen in a long time picture this i'm playing an elf deck or i'm playing a sliver deck and i can just double all my creatures like that's awesome I love this design. This is amazing for Commander, and I haven't had an opportunity, honestly, to play a lot of Commander recently. This makes me want to build a Sliver deck and play Commander. It's really cool. Next one is Icefall Regent. Two blue, three colorless. It's a 4-3 flying dragon. And when he enters the battlefield, you get to tap target creature and opponent controls, and that creature does not untap as long as Icefall Regent is on the battlefield. Spells your opponent cast the target Icefall Regent costs two more colorless mana to cast. This is another very fine limited guy. He's a 4-3 flyer for five, and he taps down your opponent's biggest threat. 
that's pretty awesome. And reminds me a little bit of Dungeon Geist. I believe Dungeon Geist costs two blue and two colorless, so he's costs a little more, but he's also a bigger body, uh, being a 4-3. So I really like this card. Buying card unlimited, I don't know if there's a deck out there in standard looking for a card like this. I feel like your blue and blue-white control, even your blue-black control, have other creatures that they're probably going to use that can protect themselves a little better. But this is still a really fine card. Damnable Pact. Two black and X. Sorcery. Target player draws X cards and loses X life. Okay, first off, let me say this. Congratulations to Wedge from the Mana Source. He's another YouTuber. I'm sure many, many of you follow him. He's got a uh, tons of subscribers he does an awesome show he's worked really hard for a long time to build up his channel and this was his first preview card that he got to spoil from wizards of the coast and wow this card is amazing so congratulations to him for getting i think the best card in the set that we've seen so far and probably the best card in the set that we're gonna see uh to be his spoiler that's awesome so well deserved congratulations to him and let's talk about this card target player draws X cards and loses X life. Already, I can sit here and give you 30 different examples of what you could do with this. And it reminds me of, now I get it, it's a one time deal. It's not like some of these other classic cards, but wow, it reminds me of Necropotence. It reminds me of Yagmoth's Bargain. And those cards were severely broken. Well, here's the sorcery version of a severely broken card, which I feel like could possibly be pretty broken. And then on top of that, you also have the ability, if you kind of read target player draws X card and loses X life, you can also burn out your opponent with this thing, with black. So this is crazy. So think of, first off, I want to draw cards in Vintage, in Legacy. This can power out a Storm combo. This can power out just about any sort of combo. Just help you get cards into your hand. You're going to see this in all the Eternal formats played. This is a fine card in Standard just to draw a few cards. And it's a fine card in Limited to either draw a few cards or maybe burn out your opponent at the end of a game when there's a Born Stall. This card is incredible. I'm happy to see it's at Rare, not Mythic Rare. Though I do feel like a deck is not necessarily looking for a four of of this card in most cases. So that might help control the price a little bit. But this is a really awesome card. I can't wait to try this out. Next card, Wandering Tomb Shell. One black, three colorless. It's a 1-6 vanilla, but it is a zombie turtle, uh, which is amazing flavor. I love that they made a zombie turtle, and I, I guess they just kind of wanted to make the slowest creature they could possibly think of. I feel like Mark Rosewater had something to do with this. I don't know if that's true, but this has Mark Rosewater written all over it. He's a fine man and limited if you have a Salt-Eye build and you're trying to gum up the ground, or even an Opsom build and you're trying to gum up gum up the ground you're going to use this guy you're going to be happy he's out there he's got a very limited role and that's it but i'm glad he exists next card commune with lava two red and x for an instant exile the top x cards of your library until the end of your next turn you may play those cards so picture this i'm playing a burn deck and this can be any format burn deck and I need to get those last few points of damage across. My opponent says go on his end step. I play this. I get a grip full of cards basically that I'm exiling and that I can play on my next turn. And I get, you know, a lightning bolt, a shock, who knows what else. And there I go, next turn I win the game. This card's amazing. And again, a little bit like the black card we just looked at, it's a one-time deal. You, you know, you could get burned if you play it and you just draw a bunch of land or something. But this is fantastic. I mean, this is just card advantage for red. Almost feels like a brain geyser for red. And I guess the reason it is red is because those cards only last you the one turn. But who cares at that point? You're just still getting a bunch of cards that you're going to be able to cast. Wherever red deck wins exists, this card is going to be played. So legacy versions, modern versions of this deck, standard versions, if there's a standard burn deck out there, they're going to want Commune with Lava. Another amazing card. Next one is Inex Survivalist. One green, one colorless. He's got Megamorph for a green and a colorless. And when he's turned face up, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls, and he's a 2-1. So he's glad he exists. He just needs to exist. He's your disenchant for the set. So 
congratulations, there he is. Uh, he's a cyborg card, but whenever you need to get rid of a artifact or enchantment, he's going to be there for you. That's about it. Next one, Jermoka's Command. One green and a white for an instant. Choose two. Prevent all damage. Target instant or sorcery would deal this turn. Target player sacrifices an enchantment. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Target creature you control fights. A target creature you don't control. So all these commands have been actually pretty off the hook. And this one is right up there, just in step with the others. And this one's another just powerful instant for two mana. And put this into perspective. I cast this card, and I put a plus one, plus one counter on my creature, and then I fight. That's Hunt the Week for two mana. <laughs> you get a Hunt the Week. And if you don't need a Hunt the Week, well, guess what? There's two other options on the card for you as well. Versatility, and I've said this with the other commands, is paramount. It makes these cards so powerful. And then their aggressive casting cost just takes it over the top. Another really fine card we've uh, spoiled today. And our last card of the day, Vial of Dragonfire. It's two, it's an artifact, pay two and tap, and it will deal two damage to target creature. Don't underestimate this card. It doesn't look like anything too great. And you, you know, you hate to play pay two for nothing, basically, and then have to pay two again to just do two points of damage. It, it doesn't feel very economical at all. But these type of cards sometimes surprise you. Blazing Torch is one that kind of, this reminds me a little bit of Blazing Torch, and it was always better than you thought it would be. Sometimes just playing this card is going to stop your opponent from maybe putting a really good creature out in the morph as, as a morph creature. And might just give you a little bit of board presence, a little bit of a head start. So you're only going to play this in limited. Not every limited deck is going to have room for it. If you have room for it, it might do you okay. Uh, you know, it can get rid of small creatures. It can get rid of morph creatures. So it's a little pricey for what it does, but it's not the worst card I've ever seen. So having said that, that is our review for the day. Hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.